Hi, I'm John, one of the SDR Play team, and today I'm going to try and address a couple of common questions we get about our RSPs. The first question is, what kind of antenna do I need? And the second most common question is, what kind of signals can I pick up with one of your SDRs? So here we have an RSP1A. Uh, other videos will guide you into how to set it up on your PC. As long as you've got a reasonable up-to-date laptop, less than 10 years old at least, um, we recommend use of a traditional mouse with a roller wheel because that becomes your tuning knob. You'll need to connect it up using a USB cable from the USB socket to the USB port on your computer. And it's a USB B type, often used with um, old printers. So you'll need one of those at a suitable length. And then we're going to connect the antenna. The antenna socket is an SMA female socket, so you need an SMA male plug which has a pin in the centre and whilst you can get adapters that go direct into uh, the socket, we do recommend always attaching some kind of uh, coax lead. Uh, this is a, a short pigtail which has a chunky SO239 connector at the end which is great for all sorts of antenna experiments. With any of the RSP family, you have the possibility of receiving signals anywhere from one kilohertz all the way up to two gigahertz. And that's a lot of spectrum. And no single antenna will give good performance over the entire frequency range. However, it's possible to cover most of it with just two or three antennas. And the picture here shows the four most popular choices of antenna for covering the bulk of the spectrum offered by wideband receivers like our SDR Play RSP family. The long wire and the whip antennas are the lowest cost options, but have some limitations. So in addition to the coverage shown on the previous chart, here you can see some of the other pros and cons of each of these popular type of wideband antennas. The long wire and the simple whip antenna are the lowest cost options. Yeah, so for shortwave and low, the cheapest option is insulated wire as long as possible and as high as possible and away from electrical noise. And the lowest cost way to do that is to have some kind of coax connection from your RSP, either to a pigtail, and then you start your wire antenna at this point, or you extend it further with a longer length of coax out to uh, maybe a, a yard, a garden, an uh, open area to get away from the house. And then at the other end, uh, you have a connection to the wire antenna. As you get into this, you'll find that um, uh, a lot of improvements can be had with uh, impedance matching and other techniques which further enhance the signal. But to get pretty good coverage, it's simply a case of getting your wire antenna, so you strip back the uh, insulation here, and obviously you would connect this directly, but the effect is the same, that you're trying to connect the long piece of wire to the center of the coax and then it's also important to provide some kind of grounding to the outer at the point of the antenna and again there's other videos and information on the internet about the use of counterpoises versus a good solid connection to, uh, to the ground. That isn't always possible if you're in a very dry climate. Uh, maybe you can't physically get close to the ground. Because um, the other point which um, 
sometimes people forget when they're trying to tune across such a wide range of frequencies is that um, the wavelengths involved vary dramatically. I mean, down up to medium wave, we've got wavelengths of kilometers and up at two gigahertz, we've got wavelengths of 15 centimeters, which is about that much. So, and it's all, all, all in between. And to have a good, effective gra grounding of your antenna, the RF grounding, you need to be within of the order of uh, a tenth or, or, or of a wavelength, which is no distance at all once you get into the higher frequencies of HF and into to the HF. So then it's all about counterpoises. Again. And here's an example of an inexpensive uh, magnetic mount whip antenna which is designed for use up at uh, amateur VHF frequencies, but will give coverage through broadcast FM, air traffic control, and uh, up into the high hundreds of megahertz. So it's a very cheap and cheerful way to get started. It will be more effective if you actually place it on some kind of um, metal surface because it has got a magnetic mount and that will act as a ground plane and further enhance the signal. So a few more tips about um, antennas, low cost antennas for the VHF frequencies and above. Um, a wire coat hanger can be cut to length. Make sure you scrape away and get some good uh, con conduction connectivity uh, to your uh, center of your coax and then um, the outer you probably need to have some kind of ground plate and this could be arranged on a windowsill for a good line of sight you can use uh, uh, metal foil to create a ground plane and make your own very very simple uh, quite effective antenna and let's say you're listening up at um, uh, 400 so 500 megahertz to PMR signals where the wavelengths are closer to uh, 65 centimeters or so, uh, then obviously a quarter wave would be around about 15 centimeters. So again, if you cut this to length, but down there you can actually get kind of a nice rigid piece of cable out of a mains wiring cable and just cut it to length and Bear the end and mount that into the centre of your coax. Again, you'll need some kind of ground plane uh, to have quite an effective uh, quarter wave uh, stub antenna. So what I'm going to do now is take you on a journey through the spectrum from down here at long wave and pick out the kind of interesting signals that are there to be picked up all the way going up into uh, the low gigahertz. Here we are on 198 kilohertz long wave here in the UK and there's several very strong signals. Here's a French one. Here's an Irish one. So that's long waves down at the uh, below 200 kilohertz or down about 200 kilohertz. Now we're moving up to 333 kilohertz and listening for one of the many non-directional beacons used by aircraft. This is one in Cambridge and you can make out the Morse code CAM as the CAM of an NDB from Cambridge. The kind of thing you can find above long wave uh, before you get to medium wave. And here we are at medium wave 
spanning from 500 kilohertz all the way up to 1.6 megahertz and here in this part of the world crammed full of stations and remember that today's return to schools will of course have an impact as we decide on the next step forward and so um, a very busy medium wave example okay time to move on up so here we have um perhaps the most exciting part of the spectrum the short wave bands where signals literally bounce around the entire globe this is the 80 meter band and most of the uh, voice communications is in single sideband which takes a little bit of getting used to if uh, if you're not used to tuning in but you'll hear voices from all around the world here this is the 80 meter band the spectrum from 1.8 up to 30 megahertz is peppered with uh, many different uh, slices of spectrum which are allocated to amateur radio use so there's an example from 80 meters we can go to uh, 20 meters which is 40 megahertz um, So these are the shortwave bands. We're now going to look at uh, all the broadcast bands within the uh, HF spectrum. So let's pick uh, a 22 meter band. It's up at uh, 30 megahertz. So these are broadcast stations from around the world. Again, like the amateur band, there are many of them. And STR Uno provides band buttons, so you could literally glide from one to another. Fantastic variety of uh, stations, a lot of them extreme propaganda, and some of them dubious content but uh, often interesting to uh, hear directly perspectives from countries which um, maybe don't always uh, uh, get their voices heard. So that's the, uh, the, the shortwave broadcast bands. Moving up now to the VHF part of the spectrum. Uh, 88 to 108 megahertz last night the weather for These injuries are... happened on oh. all the fm stations all schools in england and some in northern ireland have reopened we've been spending the day at merchants Academy. so that's the uh, fm broadcast spectrum So here we are going a bit higher VHF up at 120, 25 megahertz and we're in the uh, aircraft band. I'm actually using a wire antenna here so nothing fancy at all and um, this is a kind of band where it'd be fun to use the integrated scanner uh, to help you find the various stations. You have to move pretty fast to catch Kilo QNH one zero two one uh, request to join instruction. Flight level two eight zero confirm requested level. Flight flight level two eight here is uh, apologies. Climb flight level two eight zero continue this heading and request flight level three four zero for decrease today, please. Look at that Okay. So lots uh, lots of fun to be had listening into uh, aircraft here on the uh, air traffic control frequencies up at 118 to 136 megahertz. 
uh, on your way back home. I mean, yeah, because you drive through this area quite a bit, from what I can remember. Uh, M0 JGK returning. And here we are up on two metres, one of the several VHF amateur bands. Just popping out, get some shopping. On a Monday, that's what we do. Uh, we're going to be on a Last time we spoke, it was Lisa's uh, vaccine day, my wife's vaccine day, wasn't it? So there we go, that's uh, so, uh, yeah, 2 metres, 145 it. megahertz. Yeah, it was a couple of weeks ago, yeah. So I hope that's been useful in terms of showing you how to go about antennas and the kind of signals that you can find with an RSP. For more information, go to www.sdrplay.com. Thanks for watching.